Welcome to the That's Allowed podcast. I'm your host, Adrienne McKeon, and today we have T-Bird Love, aka Tanya Ridgely. Would you like to introduce yourself, Gorgeous? Hello, I'm so happy to be here, sister. And um, hello, everybody out there on the other side of this podcast. Um, you know, when people say, T-Bird, what do you do? And I say, well, I bring love into the planet. I'm a catalyst of change. I'm a love evolutionary solutionary. I help activate movement and help midwife people into the next phase of where they're going. And so I'm not a life coach. I'm a mentor. I'm catalyst, but I tend to wear a few different hats around here. So I just wanted to kind of set the context in case you're like, who is this? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I hear that sound now. It's kind of cool though. It sounds like, you know, your, your theme music behind you. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> That's funny that you say that a siren. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm sitting in New York and yeah. um, uh, I live kind of close to a hospital. So hopefully not too many ambulances will go by. Um, and if I'm not talking, then I might just mute just to kind of. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on right mm -hmm. now. There's a lot yeah. going on. So yeah, we roll with the punches, right? That's right. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so I usually start with this question. So I'm just going to throw it out there and see what happens. What story are you not telling? Okay. First of all, I think that's a great question. And um, as I feel into it, the story that I am not telling is that I'm gloom and doomed and that I don't know what to do with my life and that I'm going to just give up up and wait for somebody else to figure it out for me and that I wish so-and-so would stop doing this and waiting for them to stop doing it. That is not the story I'm telling. Huh? I'm getting creative and, you know, being active about my life. So I'm not engaging in that kind of a narrative. Fantastic. You know, I'm not getting caught up, you know, in that kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm staying above the water. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's put it this way then. What is the story you want to tell? right now? What do you want my audience to know? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, right now we're literally sitting in this sort of moment of in between. And um, mm -hmm. as I've been sitting in, in it as well, <clears throat> with so much change happening, not only from COVID, but, you know, um, just a few months ago, I came to visit New York uh, for Christmas, uh, because usually I live in Shanghai, China. Mm -hmm. But um, I haven't been able to get back inside since COVID. Now it's been about six months and, um, you know, I started a business over there, all kinds of things. And I've had to literally close up my business and pack all my apartment. Everything I own is there. Mm -hmm. um, I wear the same three pairs of clothes every day. Um, and so it's funny, like just beginnings and letting go. And as I'm sitting here while I was here, um, in quarantine and, uh, during George Floyd and all of these things that have been happening, um, in my heart, I was saying, okay, what, what is it that we need? What would love do right now? Mm -hmm. And, um, in response to all of this energy that's coming up, my message to everyone is, is that we need to stay focused. It's our turn. It's our time. We've got to gather with like-minded people as well as keep our hearts open and sustain that sort of, if we can keep love at our core and sustain it even during the discomfort, at some point we can break through and we can strategize about what kind of future we actually want to live into. Because right now, all of the old constructs clearly have been dismantling and falling down. And when people talk about going, to the, going back to normal, that kind of freaks me out. I'm like, mm. normal, normal, like normal. Guys, if we go back to normal, we have very little time to continue and exist with all of the other things like climate change and more mm -hmm. economic up and downs. There's so many things that are also so important that, you know, it's easy to get distracted um, yeah. by COVID, um, by, you know, um, what's happening also with Black Lives Matter. That's not a distraction, but to also hold in context that this is a moment that change is it's time to do it, everybody. And yes, I believe that it's up to us. And so I want everybody out there to know that if you're confused about what to do next and can I do anything, the answer is absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
absolutely there's something that you can do. And the first thing to start is go into your heart space and ask, what is it? What kind of future do you want to live into? And how are you showing up to ensure that that future happens? Mm. And it could be gathering with people. It could be connecting to people that inspire you. It could be reaching out. It could be saying, you know, how can I be a better person? How can I also stand for something that I don't necessarily think is a right thing to do, like violence? Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that we can do. Um, and I think one of the best things to do is to start with yourself and reflect about what wants to emerge if I'm coming from this question of what would love do right now in response to all these things. Yes. Yes. I love everything you're saying so much. So, so much. <laughs> let's <laughs> give, you. let's, let's go, let's dive a little bit deeper into what that looks like. Figuring out what you want mm -hmm. to create. Mm -hmm. Just putting yourself in that space of being open to a new possibility instead of thinking about what's normal mm -hmm. or what was normal, right? Mm -hmm. Because normal never was, right? There was no normal here. <laughs> this was really abnormal and messed up in so many ways, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah. so what do we want to normalize? Mm -hmm. What do we want? What are the values mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we want to create? for ourselves and for our children and for our future, for our community. Mm. And so do you it. have yeah. any tools, suggestions, ways that people can get to those core values mm -hmm. in themselves? Because and if you don't know that, if you don't know what you want, what comes next? Chaos, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, really great question. And <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of, zoom out and then yeah. come back in. I love it. So for me, okay, maybe I'll kind of just tell a story and then it'll make sense. Perfect. And let me just, uh, okay, there's New York. New York, there's New, Hello, York. New York City. Hello, New York. Um, <laughs> Still there. Love it. Um, so um, a lot of people, always ask, do you know, you know, how did you know your purpose? And I feel like it kind of fell into my lap when I was nine years old. Um, mm -hmm. I'm 44 now and everything I can now look back and see how pieces of my life have all been threaded together by this very impulse about, I, I mentioned to you, I bring love to the planet and is expanded as that may sound. It's also very central and very grounded. Yeah. Um, and part of that is helping to create a new relationship around what love is and getting people to recover the memory of who they are through the values of love and ethic of love and not a harm, a, like a hallmark, Hey, love you. Kiss, kiss, which is also <laughs> sweet, but it's, it's that love that I spoke about, about sustaining this core value around love being in that heart space, despite the discomfort and pain that a lot of our ancestors also endured so mm. that I could be sitting here with you talking about this today. Okay, so the sustained love for something bigger and people like that, obviously Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., I think of Maya Angelou, you know, um, these kinds of people who endure, you know, crazy um, periods of time of, 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 of all kinds of everything. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me get back to, so when I close my eyes, and this is, this, it'll make sense in a second, the world that I want to live in and that I do whatever I can to model that and show that up is when I close my eyes, I believe honestly in these two things. When people learn how to value and love themselves at such a core level, when they actually realize what's theirs and what isn't, what has been learned or what has been inherited mm. from their ancestry and actually can say, well, is this who I really want to be? That awareness first gives its back, puts us back into a place of choice. And sometimes learning how to actually love and value ourselves is the hardest thing to do. But once we learn how to do that, of course, we can love people that we might not know. Of course, we can value the environment in all life so much better and carry it as stewards so much better than we do now. And so I feel like we've lost touch with the ability to really love um, because of the, being desensitized or to our emotions, to one another, to all kinds of things. So when I was nine, and this, this will make sense on how to, when you ask me, well, how, what's the world I want to do and how, do, how would I do it? 
So I think it was in 84, um, there was Hands Across America. I don't know if you remember that, but Hands Across America was my jam because in the 80s at that time, there was We Are the World, there was Live Aid, there was all of these really cool big gatherings of artists coming together for charities to help other people. And I was crazy about it because I loved Michael Jackson and YouTube and, and YouTube, YouTube and all kinds of amazing queen and, and, and different bands and who were coming together to stand for something. And, um, but I was too young to really go to those concerts. I was only may maybe nine or 10 years old. Mm -hmm. But Hands Across America brought children and parents all together to hold hands for 15 minutes across the entire continent, continent of the U.S. in a human chain to raise money to help with the homeless problem in this country. And I remember getting my, saying, Mommy, Mommy, we have to go do this. I mm -hmm. get to be a part of something like this. And I remember standing in this human chain and looking down and up at the endless lines of people. Now, as a child, even though it was called Hands Across America, America, to me, it was like the entire world. And I remember closing my eyes and standing there thinking to myself, oh my God, if I write a love note and pass it, it's going to get to China. <laughs> and I'll never... <laughs> I'll never forget that because that, you know, you know, when you dig a hole in the ground, you get to China. Yeah, I don't know if you yeah. have those things. Oh, absolutely. So as a nine-year-old, that was a big deal for me because I was like, this is connectedness. And I made this promise to myself. I said, I want to create this feeling for the rest of my life. Mm. And little did I know at that time that that's when I was first initiating my purpose. And my life has been literally building that, building communities and connection and that heart-centered connection. Like, bridging difference through common ground. And, um, and so my life kind of unfolded in this way. And I think being an artist and a musician definitely helped me do that because I've been able to travel all over the world and then use those skill sets to develop leadership courses and all kinds of different things. And so when you say, you know, how, what is the world that you want to live into? First, I would say, I want you to think about something that you might've forgotten about that really made you come alive. Hmm. That really made you come alive and ask yourself, what was it about that that made me come alive? What made that special for me and how have I been connected to it or disconnected and see if you can connect back to it, whatever that spark is just to spark something up because we need sparks. <laughs> we need sparks to kind of, you know, rev us up. And then I want you to think about, you know, what does the world need more of? <laughs> that you could give it so that it can become more alive with the things that spark more beauty in the world. And I think kindness is one of the first steps. Mm -hmm. it's kindness. If we're kind to ourselves first mm, and yes. not beat ourselves up for not having all the answers and coulda, woulda, shouldas, mm -hmm. it gives us a break. We can remember that sometimes we, we don't always get it right. And our mistakes make us relatable. Yeah. And then, and then we can learn things from them. And so I think if we can give ourselves a break from beating ourselves up and first learning to be kind to ourselves and setting boundaries, we can then feel our own self-worth and value. So then we can value other people's boundaries and self-worth and difference, as well as, you know, the, the value of all life on this planet. And so I, I think first starting from the self, and healing the scar tissue inside of our collective consciousness that tells us we're limited or less than or keeping us in polarity holds us back. And then the final piece that I'll add on to that, there's something I truly believe this. I believe that when women, uh oh, what's up? I believe, um, I just, uh, you know, when we were talking about the um, alarm through yeah. the phone, but not that just happened and I clicked it off. So, excuse okay. me. Um, I feel like with women, when we as women can heal deep in our core self, within our collective consciousness, the oppression, the hurt that's been inherited all over the world, when we actually can love and fully come to that place, I believe that this will be a completely different world. Because yeah. I also believe that it's our turn and it's our time. And there's something that we have, and a lot of the indigenous people believe that too, it's the time of the woman. And mm. when we can heal our stuff, everything will fall into place. So there's a lot of us women leading change. It's not about leaving men behind, but um, Barbara Marks Hubbard called it evolutionary woman, mm -hmm. where we're evolving things with men, not competing, 
but we're here as a whole self to bring about difference by also, also modeling it. So yeah. not fighting for change, but actually modeling change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leading by example. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. So let's talk a little bit more about self-compassion and self-kindness. I think that's so important. And it's something that women have a difficult time with specifically, mm -hmm. I've noticed. We have a hard time with kind of radical self-acceptance and, and self-compassion. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to put out there just as a little exercise, mm -hmm. I want you just for today, as you're walking through your day, just notice every time you hear yourself getting hard on yourself for anything, just notice that self-talk where you're just being hard on yourself for anything that's going on and just take a moment, take a deep breath and just say, I forgive you. I forgive you. And just see what that does. See, see what that does and, and, and how you go on with your day from there. So my next question is how, so that story, when, when you talk about when you were nine years old, I love that story so much, so beautiful. How did that change you? Wow, well, um, two things. Thank you for that beautiful suggestion about forgiveness. I think it's so beautiful. That's a wonderful, wonderful suggestion. And absolutely, I'm gonna put that into practice. So thank you, beautiful sister. Um, I feel like Hands Across America and how it changed me was that it showed me for the first time, it was the first time I had ever been um, in an event where everyone all together was focused on holding hands and doing something for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that was the first, you know, you know, as a child, that was only in my family, you know, yeah. we would help each other out, you know, maybe our friends, but it was the first time that I had saw millions of people coming together and hold like touching and holding hands, which is such a beautiful symbol. It's about togetherness and, um, and how that changed me. It showed, um, that I had a place in the world <laughs> and <Yeah>. that, <laughs> and that, um, that feeling that wonderful event had literally put me on my path. Mm -hmm. because it had sparked, I knew that I could do so. I love that feeling. And I knew that that was part of my destiny because of how much it made, it made me see myself in that moment and how I felt connected to the world. So I feel like it was really good for me to see that millions of people cared about other people, that they would make the effort to go downtown or wherever they were to come and hold hands. And that it was so many different people mm -hmm. that we were from all walks of life. And <clears throat> excuse me. And that just, that showed me that there's a lot of goodness in the world. Absolutely. And I love feeling that. So I, I still hold to that. I believe there's so much goodness in the world, despite the insane pain. There's a lot of greatness too. Yeah. So you just reminded me of a story that I had completely forgotten about. Do you mind if I share? Please, please. <laughs> so this was, I must have been um, probably 11, something, something like that. And my dad is a Quaker and the Quakers do a lot of volunteering. It's kind of a thing that they like to do. They're, they're very all about uh, practicing more than they preach which I really respect about the Quakers. And so one time he took me and my sister down to a local homeless shelter to serve dinner. And I remember, um, you know, I was having a good time just kind of messing around with, with my friends who were up there and being my usual just kind of bubbly out there loud self. And this guy who was obviously detoxing and was really not having a good time got really angry and started yelling at me and he was like, shut up, you wormy little brat. And, you know, and it really like made me shrink back into myself for a minute. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I had this moment of like, I never want to do this again. And then I caught myself and said, that's just one person, right? Don't let that one person destroy this experience that you were having a minute ago that was really positive and wonderful. And sure enough, after that, a bunch of people came up to me to say, hey, are you okay? I just want to let you know your smile made my day. 
And I want you to know that your enthusiasm is wonderful and don't let anybody tell you different. And so to have that, you know, over and over again, these people to come up and say, just be you, don't worry about that guy. There's, you know, like, <laughs> hate yeah. hate, basically, and just telling me that there's always going to be someone who doesn't like what you're doing mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. It has to do with what they're going through. That's right. That guy was going through some stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I couldn't even possibly fathom at the age of 11. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that ironically, that experience solidified for me how much I do enjoy helping people and putting myself out there, even though some people are not going to be happy with what you try to do. You know, mm -hmm. your offering is not going to be acceptable to everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <clears throat> that's right. That's yeah. okay. And, and, you know, that it gives us, it, you know, it's, it's funny. It's like, it's kind of a process and I'm sure you've experienced this too, because of who you are and what you're doing on this platform and your heart and everything. There's something really beautiful when, <clears throat> remember my teacher said this to me, there's nothing more whole than a broken heart mm. because when your heart breaks, your heart breaks open and love can get in and come out. And when you heal that aspect of you, you're no longer two, but you're this integrated one, which is in yeah. some ways it, that entices me even more than just the oneness, you know, mm -hmm. like that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's, that's the being, but the becoming is very exciting because that's where we get to learn how to love yes, and, and learn how to sustain love, mm -hmm. even when we're hurting. And um, because the world, as we just said, there's so much beauty inside of it, despite the outrageous insanity and pain that's going along with it. And I think that <clears throat> when we can continue to stay in that place and not allow things that happen, you know, it's shitty when things happen, shitty things happen to us, no doubt, right? right? And it hurts and it sticks and then we've got to spend years of therapy or whatever process. And yet at the same time, what happened is only what happened to us. I think we get stuck thinking that what happened to us then defines who we are when that's actually not the truth. Right. Through our ability to make choices and free will, we can choose whoever we want to be, yeah. especially those of us who have an education and live in places like this, we have an opportunity to really develop in the way we want. And so I'm not a very big fan of when I hear people say, oh, I can't, or I don't know, and I'm not, and I shouldn't do that, and I should, and I'm always like, you know, shooting on yourself goes shitty. And like, <laughs> listen, to the, listen to the toxic language of, you know, the words that we put out creates our environment. <clears throat> and just because something happened to you doesn't mean that it's not valid or important because it's a part of your story. But that whole piece I was talking about, about integrating the heart, it yeah. also makes us relatable so we can help other people who've gone through the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's where the love comes. And that's mm -hmm. the gift of those painful situations. So we don't have to throw them away, but we can up level, heal, integrate, and help bring people along to learn how to go into that forgiveness space as well as see the fullness of who they are, not just define themselves by what happened because of what somebody did or didn't do. That's giving up their power. Yeah. So I, I'm so happy that with your fiery, vibrant light, you were like, no way. And I'm so sorry that that happened to you as well as how beautiful that those people came and surrounded yeah. me. You were like, look, baby, look. Actually, <laughs> you made my day. Right? How beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah. And it was. It was beautiful. I love that. Don't should on yourself. I am so going to use that from now on. Mm -hmm. Don't should on yourself. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love it. And I think that's such a perfect way to describe that because like you said, whenever you decide, oh, I shouldn't do something or I'm not, I'm not allowed or I'm not authorized, that's part of why I call this podcast That's Allowed right? Mm -hmm. Because if everybody decided that they weren't allowed to do something just because they didn't have a piece of paper that said so, or somebody gave them permission or whatever it was, just about nothing would happen, right? If we all did what we were supposed to do or what we're authorized to do or what we, <laughs> you know, were given permission to do, nothing would happen. Nothing cr would be created because you can't create something without breaking a barrier, mm -hmm. right? Yep. 
I totally, I totally agree. Um, again, there's something that um, uh, one of my teachers said, um, you got to keep every boundary that needs to be kept and break every boundary that needs to be broken. Oof. And living inside of that paradoxical space mm -hmm. of being of being the steward of your own life and knowing again what's yours and what was inherited, you know, from society or your ancestral lineage. I think yes. it takes some some deep thought on that. Yeah. Um, but when you get to a place where you can see <laughs> those boundaries and borders, um, it's important to break free because if we don't, you're right. The creativity can't emerge. The yeah. creativity, the the also discovering the depth of our capacity, building of resilience, mm -hmm. these kinds of things. Um, and I think that, you know, it's interesting because I've, I've been living in China <clears throat> for uh, about three and a half years. And there, um, it's it's very much a controlled space of you better do what you're told. Yeah. Um, and um, what's beautiful about being there, because I really... I have enjoyed myself thoroughly being there um, and think the culture is just phenomenal um, and have a lot of amazing friends um, is the moment that when it starts to break open, because even though that society is built in that way, there's still <laughs> the internet globalization, even with the control and things like that, somehow the water seeps through, <laughs> mm -hmm, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. The consciousness yeah. all around the world. I think also as women get more empowered, something happens in the system mm -hmm. where there's something inside of us that makes us question things. Yeah. And when we begin to question things, that's where sometimes authority, whether it's a government, whether it's a parent, whether it's a boss, whether it's a boyfriend, whatever it is, begins to get uncomfortable because the seams of that control are starting to break because I think when people start questioning for themselves, they have more access to their life. Yeah. And um, it gives them the ability to start to define, well, here's actually who I want to be. I don't, I, I'm choosing no longer to be what you're telling me to be. And I think that sometimes that journey of when people first get a taste of that is a hard one because it's confusing. And I think even for those of us in Western countries and, and, um, particularly for Americans, I don't know if you're American, but um, um, <clears throat> we have this ability, <laughs> despite the, the historical context of this country, <laughs> based on a lot of violence and things like that, there's a lot of beauty. And, um, you know, my ancestors did a lot so that I could be here. And, um, and my mother taught me, I have to speak, be myself and be out loud no matter yeah. what. And there's something so special about that um, where learning that dance of, well, what actually is me? There's always a shadow and a light aspect to it. And when we first start to recognize that who we've been isn't actually who we wanna be or who mm -hmm. we actually are, we gotta get through that level of like, oh God, and that creates a lot of catastrophe and resentment and sadness and anger and that's okay we can go through that and we can also then heal that and then eventually we get to the next space like that broken heart integrating so then oh okay i see where the lessons are i'm yeah. not going to reject that i'm going to integrate it and mm. transcend it right and include it so that as i continue to grow more into my own reality of who i'm purposefully shaping myself to be other people who are wanting to do that I now know the road and can help share tools and my heart space and listen and hold space for people who are going through that same transitioning so that they're not alone or that this is just the way that it is because it's not. We're living in an amazing time with so much access. And that's why I'm saying living in the, in the I can't, I should, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. No way. This is not 2,000 years ago. We have yeah. everything today to really become who we want. It's just imagining and feeling into that power that we have because of our choice, the choices that we make, and having the courage enough to take it back and stop giving yeah. it away. Yeah. Telling our stories can be so powerful and also telling the stories of our ancestors because when that story is inside of you and staying silent, it colors everything. It's like you're looking through that story at the world. And when you finally get that story out into the world, 
then it becomes this thing that you can look at, you can pass around, you can kind of analyze it and understand <laughs> it and say, hey, that was. And then recognize that things can now be different moving forward. And I, almost, I also want to say something about control because I feel like, especially as a woman, <laughs> I have often felt like if I gave my control, if I gave power to somebody else, they would take care of me and that I wouldn't hurt anybody because they were controlling me and making sure that I didn't hurt them or anybody else. And the opposite was 100% of the time true. Mm. That as soon as I gave away my power, as soon as I tried to give control to somebody else, people would get hurt because it is not a natural thing for us to be controlled because guess what? We can't be. Even if you want to be, you can't be. You are forced to be free as the... Uh, existentialists <laughs> like to say, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can only control yourself, your responses to what occurs. Mm -hmm. And so every time that you think you're controlling somebody else, that's an illusion. And anytime you think that somebody else is controlling you, that's an illusion. That's just an agreement that you've made and that you can break at any time and probably will. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We lie mm -hmm. to ourselves so much. And when you lie to yourself, you're lying to everyone around you and you're doing damage to your soul that is really hard to see at the time, but over time you start to see it and you go, oh my God. And so one of the most powerful things that you can do in this life, in this world, is just to stop lying to yourself, just to get rigorously honest with yourself about what, what brings you joy and then staying loyal to that joy, no matter what, <laughs> Even yeah. when it's inconvenient or uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And what yeah. a great time. Like right now is probably the best time for everyone to get in that position of asking themselves, what do I need right now in order for me to access my joy? Yes. What do I need right now? so that I can feel better because of myself, not outside stimulus. What do I need right now? What is, and I'd even break it down. Like sometimes <clears throat> I'll have to say, okay, what does my mental body need right now so that it can show up in the way that I need so that I'm not feeling overwhelmed? Yeah. What does my emotional body need from me right now so that she can show up and hold us in the way that's needed? So that we can move forward and what does my physical body need from me right now so that she can keep me going yeah and sometimes i think if we learn how to ask better questions mm -hmm. which are simple questions and really take the time to listen you know um and not get i don't have enough time i don't i can't i can't i can't as my mother would say um one thing for certain and two things for sure <laughs> certainty is a myth <laughs> and, <laughs> and when we're certain about everything, as we can see now, everything that we thought would forever, 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 mm -hmm. ever, forever, ever, 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 is like, um, <laughs> no, actually not. And mm -hmm. the whole world is united in a way that has never been yeah. and yet completely separated. And so even as we try to go back to normal, the only places that are kind of normal are in Shanghai, in China, because it's a little bit of a bubble to do that, but the rest of the world, no, and that's even gonna catch up. Yeah. Um, and so if there was ever a moment in time, anyone listening to this, is to go back home. Mm. And what I mean by home, go home into mm -hmm. your heart and ask, what is it that you need to access your joy? And even if you're afraid, I get a lot of people who are like, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do yet. I'm looking for my tribe. I'm wanting to do something. Well, that first impulse, don't give up on it. You may not have all the answers right away. And yes, I understand the urgency, but also know that we are in an emergence and that there's a lot of creativity. So while you're in the emergence, creativity is messy. Try things out. Say things that you've never said before. Mm -hmm. Call a person you haven't talked to. Tell them you love them. Apologize. Yeah. Have, get into a practice of taking important risk yes. so that you get your nervous system ready to be like, dun, 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 dun. when you're ready to take that leap, 
and to actually claim your joy. Yes. You know, maybe it's leaving a relationship, whatever it is, have the guts Mm -hmm. to follow through. And then that will lead to something else and keep following that thread. I think that's one of the most important things, the first steps to do first, Mm -hmm. so that we get into a habit of trusting our choices as opposed to doing what we think we should do because we've been conditioned. Yes. I want to talk about joy for a minute. What do you think is the relationship between joy and love? I love you so much. I love your questions. I love your spirit. (laughs) I just love, I do. I love it. Oh, I love Um, you. I'm so glad you're here. I feel the same. I feel the same. Again, as my mom would say, I love you, mom. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, honey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Joy and love. (laughs) Um, Love, I think, is the source and joy is part of the vehicle. Yes. Yes. I think exactly that. (laughs) I think joy is an expression of love. Mm -hmm. Joy is an expression of love. Mm -hmm. And so the in love and love starts with yourself. You have to love you first, right? Mm-hmm. You can only love other people as much as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And so when you start loving yourself, that's when joy comes. And that's when joy starts to just bubble and bubble and bubble and bubble. And when you give that love to other people, it just like gets exponential, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so true. And for those people who are out there like, well, I'm trying to love myself more because I often work with a lot of amazing people uh, and mostly women tend to attract them, but um, who are going through a lot who, um, you know, say it's hard to love myself. It's not that easy. And a lot of times anything that's worth it doesn't always feel easy. There's times Mm -hmm. where it does, but anything that's worth it, it means that you're being tested on what you're committed to. So I think that it's all about how you see things. And and I always say, let's, let's change the channel a little bit and focus a channel on, let's just see ourselves through the perception of love's eyes, because love (laughs) doesn't discriminate. Love only loves. Mm -hmm. You could recognize yourself. Like when you make a mistake, well, what would love do or say to you now? Yeah. As opposed to what would your judge or say or do? And not that there's never room for improvement, but the whole thing going back to joy. I feel like everybody, we've done so much work already. Let's stop working and let's play. Let's bring in more joy. Let's play. If we're so serious all the time. And even if it's, if you say, if you're a person who says yes to everything and wish that you didn't try saying no. And that's one tiny step that's showing how much you're loving your choice. Yes. Um, Taking, you know, uh, instead of talking about how much you wanted to, to be an artist, actually making a piece of art is a representation of loving your choices. Um, Asking for your needs in a relationship, you know, I need to be heard more. Can we have more time together? Or, you know, this isn't working is an indication of you loving yourself more before you go to bed every night and reflecting on all the small and large things that you've done that you appreciate and value is a loving gesture by going to yourself and when you have that negative self-talk and saying, I forgive this, is a loving gesture. This is all around the practice of learning how to love oneself. So I would say, don't get into this this ideal that, oh, as soon as I love myself, everything works. No, (laughs) we're like human. It's a process. It's a process. And the more that we engage with love and can sustain it, the less that hard part sticks around. Mm -hmm. And the more we're able to work it like a ninja or Aikido or a Jedi Knight, because Mm -hmm. the thing is, is we're always going to have to face challenges because it reminds us, well, what choices are you making? And that's sometimes we need reminders. Well, what am I committed to? So when you get, you know, when you're feeling like a bump on a log, you got to ask yourself, well, what's up? What are the choices that I'm making right now? And are there other choices? And always there are. What are the other choices that will bring me back to my joy? And what do I really want? And you said that in the beginning. You need to know what you want because if you don't, how are you ever going to get there? And if you're like, well, I don't really know what I want. Well, let's start with what you love or what you like. How do you, or how would you like to feel? I want to feel more ease and grace in my life. So what would that, what would that look like? Then people always usually know it's just an excuse or crutch. This is why I don't know what I want. That's showing that you haven't spent enough time nurturing that part of yourself that's trying to tell you. 
And mm -hmm. so this is why these questions and taking the time and listening to this amazing podcast is a way to get in that practice and to just follow through. It's a process. You said so many amazing things there that I want to comment on a little bit. So the first one is the word no. And I think people have a really fraught relationship with the word no. <laughs> and so I just want to say to you, every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. You're saying no to another possibility. And often that no is just a passive no to something that you really wanted, but are not allowing yourself to have. And so I just, every time you have an opportunity to say yes or no to something, I want to take you to take that moment and just go, what am I saying no to if I say yes to this opportunity? And really prioritize what brings you joy. And then I want to talk about that, that beautiful back and forth between challenge and ease, right? <laughs> Flow and work. <laughs> mm -hmm. That I think what happens is, we have to challenge ourselves because otherwise we don't grow, right? Mm -hmm. We stagnate. And every time, and here's the great thing about it, or maybe the annoying thing about it, is that life's like a video game, right? So as soon as you get through that boss battle, then you've leveled up, but now guess what? Everything's a little bit harder because yeah. now you're in a higher level. Yep, yep, that's <laughs> but right. But you're now equipped to mm -hmm. deal with that level. Mm -hmm. And so everything that's happening to you, believe it or not, you are equipped to deal with that because it's happening to you right now. Girl, bring it, bring it, bring <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would say if that challenge is presented to you, then now is the time to face up to that challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A billion and percent. And if it's mm -hmm. not a challenge presented to you, that's the time to flow. That's the time to just celebrate and enjoy that ease and harvest the fruits of your labor, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't judge yourself for that. Try not to get into that guilt situation. Just accept what is because you can only start from where you are, right? Mm -hmm. That's so, so powerful. I mean, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. And more yes. And, um, you know, it's that whole aspect of discerning, you know, learning mm -hmm. how to be a great discerner um, as well as I like to, you know, sometimes I've, I've been <clears throat> learning a lot about biomimicry. Mm -hmm. lately. And, um, I love looking at nature because nature has a lot of the answers and, you know, we go through these cycles and, you know, anything that's important is worth putting the work in. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, a simple thing like weight loss or preparing for a marathon. You have to train. You have to do push ups. You have to do mm -hmm. all of these things that can feel, Oh, and yet they feel good because you know that you're, you're doing it because you have your why. And I think that that's very important is how you stay in everybody, even when things are hard. And even if you're about to start and you're like, ah, and your foot's like barely lifting off the ground, think about the meaning and value within your why to keep you motivated and in the game. And always utilize that as your base point. So that no matter what's happening around you, you always know why and you're connected to it personally. So that as you engage in the seven push up and you have 106 more to go, when you engage in those courageous conversations, when you engage in whatever it is, whether it's COVID and resilience or 9-11 or whatever happens to you that comes about, you're able to still find your ability to be resilient and committed to something that's important to you and keep your channel on your ability to stay there because that'll help pull you through. And that's the beautiful part about, again, challenge. When you hear a story of, of a Holocaust survivor and what they're doing or a refugee who's changed their life around or someone who's gotten themselves uh, out of drug addiction and they're contributing to communities of people or someone who's gotten off the street or someone who X, Y, Z, and you hear their story and we're brought to tears. It's not because there's some super human person that fell out of the sky. It's because they got through pain. It's because they learned how to translate their pain into an opportunity because they didn't give up and because they said, my life is worth much more than what's happening to me that yes. I'm choosing to make it through and even consider some people who do this. This is where I like to think is about 
how we're modeling and being that role modeling. How are we actually showing up so that we can model it to each other without telling people what to do, but modeling it so that it becomes normal so that we don't think of it as a pain in the ass, but like, great, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to play bigger. Yes, I'm terrified right now. Mm -hmm. What if, what if, what if, what if, and it's okay, you know? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I can just make it up, you know, and, and trust that you can make it up and it'll still be brilliant even if you make a few mistakes. Oh, and you will. Again, you you know, will. It's we all, all good. Yeah. If we all do and we're not going to die. If we, if we go after what we want, you know, or we might, but that's part of life too. You know, <laughs> people die. It happens. Mm -hmm. I want to say, so the, the subtitle of my book, Melting Ivory is life happens for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when things happen, it's hard to see sometimes at the time, but everything that happens happens for you. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the, the, the things that happened to me in the, in the course of the book are, are pretty fucked up, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I would not go back and change a thing. I wouldn't mm -hmm. change a single thing mm -hmm. because it brought me to where I'm at, you know, mm -hmm. and it allowed me this freedom that I never had experienced in my life before mm -hmm. because I had to fight for it. Mm -hmm. I had to find that why I had to find that motivation mm -hmm. to be free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not finding that why, if you're not connecting what you're doing to a strong why, then you need to stop and you need to step back and say, why am I doing this? Because mm -hmm. it could be a should. It could be that you're shooting on yourself mm -hmm. and saying, mm -hmm. oh, people told me that I should get in shape. And so I'm doing these pushups or somebody said to me, you're fat. And so I felt like I had to go and do this. Right. Mm -hmm. It may not be because of something that you're really connected to on a soul level. And so you mm -hmm. need to just straighten that out and go, why am I doing this? Does this matter to me? Mm -hmm. And if it does, then keep at it no matter what, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. And um, again, I think it's going, reflecting in terms of learning how to discern better and learning mm -hmm. what our needs are. And um, because it's, it's funny, you know, it's always such a funny thing to navigate through life and, and get into that place where we switch from life is happening to me to for me. Um, and it takes that journey, you know, um, everybody. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes people say things that we might not want to hear, but it's the exact thing we need to hear mm -hmm. in that moment. I think about a lot of mentors in my life or things um, that have happened to me that I can now be like, oh, I'm so glad, you know, where it yeah. might've been embarrassing or, not good or you know um just like the the grumpy guy in in the shelter um who actually was a teacher for you um yeah. and um when we go through i think enough of life crisis and pain as well as enough healing especially people who are choosing love um we can recognize that that's when everything is medicine like people like tina turner or nelson mandela um you know and Tina says the exact same thing. She would never change anything about her life because it led her to where she is. And she also needed to find her own strength to individuate, yes. um, which is something I think we all need to do is to individuate from the things that we learned that mm -hmm. might've worked at a certain time for those people. Um, but I think we're, we're figuring out how to learn what it means to be authentic, <laughs> like boldly authentic and yeah. what that even means and how to find that and find the right tribe and the right way to express things. You know, we're in a very creative phase because we're still partly in the old as we're moving into the new. And, um, and so it's important to remember if you want to create something new, you can't bring the same old shit in, but you can learn from, you can learn from those patterns and those things just as, you know, many of us are gathering globally to think about, well, how can we continue to create partnerships and, and move things forward with um, the different networks that we have very much involved in that kind of stuff. And one, we're learning how to really get along in difference. We're learning how to get along and understand each other. We're learning how to not ignore the racism in, in this country. We're learning about <laughs> why we shouldn't be having gun violence. We're learning how to um, 
uh, be with difference and not blame, game, shame. We're learning how to speak in more of a love language by also setting boundaries while also engaging in really hard conversations and having to look at things because it's worth it. And yeah. we're learning how to, because of crisis, which is this beautiful evolutionary driver of what's actually important. So if you're kind of like, I don't have a why. I don't have why. I don't know why. I have no <laughs> idea why. I'm confused why. Okay, well, here's a wake up call. Climate change, economic, everything right mm -hmm, now. Like mm -hmm. if there was ever a moment to get on your why, why is now? Why to is think now? about other people even. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that we're learning how to do as a culture is to stop thinking about ourselves yeah. and to think about other people in all life as a collective um, and not just our ethnocentric crew, right? but get world centric and even cosmos centric about mm -hmm. it because we're recognizing how we're all connected from COVID, from the crazy climate change stuff that's that's happening and will continue to happen yep. and from a lot of things that we might not even be able to dream up until they happen because now we're in it. And so it's giving us a chance to reflect on, well, what are my values? Mm -hmm. What actually are mine? Were they imposed upon me? What is important to me? Yeah. Like if I were able to create a new world, what would be the, 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 the five key values that I would want engaged in them and yeah. to actually begin to, you know, engage and explore in those kinds of conversations so that you can find your why and not just say, I don't know why. Well, you have to be proactive. You have to actually engage and, 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 and utilize the gifts that you were given, which is a mind and a body and a moment and your own unique individual way to actually step up into a pur purpose that we all have. We each have mm -hmm. our own unique purpose. It's up to you to go and claim it. Wow. So beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Empathy, right? Empathy. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. get yourself some. Go get yourself some. <laughs> Go be proactive and get off the sidelines. It'll be Absolutely. okay. And even yeah. if you're uncomfortable, you've been uncomfortable before, so it's not like a new feeling. So now you can be a step ahead. Okay? Like, it's all good. So there's, there's three, <laughs> three rules that I have a lot of people on here who are, are going through or have gone through recovery. And so mm -hmm. I keep hearing these three rules, and I love them so much. So the mm -hmm. first one, it's like rules for happy living. Rigorous authenticity right? Practice Love rigorous it. authenticity. Mm -hmm. Surrender the outcome. You can't control that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Surrender the mm -hmm. outcome. And the third is do uncomfortable work. Mm -hmm. Just do the work. Nothing's going to make you feel better except doing the work. <laughs> you know what the work is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. go do your work. Yep. Yep. <laughs> with love, with, you know, with your why, you know, in there. Do your work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And model what it is to do the work mm -hmm. around people who are also doing the work so you can get into a habit if you're one of those kind of people who needs to do it in a group. Yes. So surround yourself with people who are doing the work. Listen to podcasts and people who are doing the work. Reach mm -hmm. out. Find meetup. Even if we're still on COVID, find people. There are so many out there. Do Absolutely. the work. Do just, the work. Just do the work. <laughs> Yeah. And also forgive yourself for not always doing the work as perfectly as you could or, you know, as, as stringently as you could. You, you need to take care of yourself in the way that you need to take care of yourself too. So self-compassion. That's true, which is also the work. Yeah, which is also yeah. the work. The, the work <laughs> is, the, that's part of the work. So, yeah, you, know, yeah. it's, you know, we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be authentic. And yeah. I think Part of the work is taking responsibility, the ability to respond to life mm, instead of mm -hmm. to react to it. And the less, the more we get out of reacting to life and the more we take responsibility, <laughs> the more we'll, we'll, we'll trust ourselves and our answers and our outcomes and each other. And um, it's called creativity. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This has been so amazing. Thank you so much for all of this. Feel the same. Yeah. I, I just really feel so, love being with so you today. So full right now. Yes. So <laughs> uh, please tell all these wonderful people where they can find more of you because I know they're going to want more after this. I so appreciate that. And um, so everybody, uh, so I'm back here stateside and I've got a lot of really great things coming up. Um, so you can find me uh, 
my website's T-Bird L-U-V, so tbirdluv.com. Um, I'm that's pretty much complete. Um, like I said, I've been living in China, running a business. And now that I've been here about six months, my life has changed. So um, I'm bringing a lot of my global work here. And I just produced an event called the Impossible Summit that happened for six days in May that me and a group of friends built in four weeks. Um, it was insane. Wow. And we had over 60 incredible global change agents from around the world who've done seemingly impossible things to unpack that as a roadmap um, to help us to continue to move into a new kind of paradigm through the emergence of love and contribution and responsibility. And so now I've literally kicked that in and we are now curating a series of events and circles and more talks with these amazing people. And I'd love to invite you into that community. Um, we're called the New World Network. Right now we're literally Again, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm here now putting it into place, but stay tuned. You can, our website is theimpossiblesummit.com and um, we'll have some basic things there. We're building out all of our social media channels. T-Bird Tall Flame L-U-V. I'm on Facebook and as well as Instagram and you'll get to see a lot of the work. Oh, LinkedIn is also a great place to find me. That's um, T-Bird uh, L-U-V, you know, um, at LinkedIn. And you'll be able to find me and stay tuned because you'll see my work, but the work is continuously expanding and I'm building with so many amazing people um, who are on the front lines of doing the work. And we'd love to help support you to do your work and play and do work together and inspire good work through the playful lens. So I would stay in touch everybody. And um, it's been such a pleasure to be with you, lady. I just feel so blessed. Thank you for being on this planet. Thank you for your story and your journey. And thank you for, you know, creating this and all that you do and inspire. It's really beautiful. I'm so happy you're on this planet with me. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. 